Today, saints of God, I'm going to talk to you for a minute about waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord seems to be something that a lot of people are struggling with in the society that we live in today. Even within our own town, there were several shootings on a Sunday evening. Every day is bad. But on Sunday evening, rampant shootings in our city. And people are getting concerned as to where is God in all of this and where, why is God allowing this to happen? And things are going to happen in the world that we may not understand on this side. There's just some things that in the human mind, we will never be able to comprehend on how they're being accomplished and what God is doing in the background. We just must have faith to believe and have the courage to endure based upon our faith and our resilience and our hope in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that we will be able to endure anything that will come our way. But it says in Psalms 27 and 14, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. The thing of it is, is this, is that if the Lord is telling us in his word that he shall strengthen thine heart, that means that there are going to be occurrences in our lives of which we will need to lean and totally wholly depend on God because we will need courage that only God will give us to live in this sin enriched world that we live on. And it concludes by saying, I say, wait on the Lord. We as humans are frail and imperfect, but our Lord is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. And God is able to do anything but fail. We must be willing to place all of our hope, all of our tomorrows, and all of our being into the hands of God so that he can strengthen us. For this to be in scripture, God knew that we would need strength. And it says again in Lamentations 3, 25 and 26, it said, the Lord is good unto them that wait for him. Saints, we must wait. Even if we're out of our comfort zone, even if we don't feel like it, we need to wait. Know this, that God knows every hair that is on your head, every one that, that's missing. And if he knows this, one of my favorite songs, if his eye is on the sparrow, you know he's watching you. And it says, wait for him to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope, that is never give up on God, never surrender your faith, no matter how dark it gets outside, no matter how ugly the situation may be, always know that God can come in, God can show up and show out. And it is our duty to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. That means we should not be somewhere mumbling and grumbling. We shouldn't be somewhere, oh, woe is me. You know, the E or theology, oh, it's so bad. It may be bad. I don't wanna make light of that, but it is our hope for tomorrow. It is our hope for even later on today, holding on to the promises of God, we are able to accomplish great things. See, waiting on the Lord forms our Christian character. Our Christian character has to be formed and we must learn to not be impatient because everything that God does for us will be done in his time. And his time is not our time. It's God's time. His time is infinite. He doesn't operate within the realm that we operate in. He's at a much significantly, infinitely higher level of existence. God is working on us. See, never forget, he who began a good work in you will perform it. Nothing was done quickly. Nothing usually lasts that is done quickly. We don't become like Peter or Paul overnight. We must let this work on us, the things that we are in. We must be resilient. We must be persistent. We must persevere through everything, the doubt, the angst, the joys, and the sorrows and the victories. We need to wait on God to work in our lives and in the lives of others. We can't make anyone come anywhere or do anything, but we can be a shining example by living a Christian life and letting life form our Christian character in such a manner that no matter 
what we're looking at, no matter how bleak the situation may be or how bright it might be in blessings, that we never forget our position is in God. It kind of reminds me of all these license plates I see, all to God I owe. We owe the good and the bad. And you know what? Anything that we go through is to make us better. And the good lets us know that God is a redeemer, a deliverer, a restorer. And we need to live our lives in a manner that we wait on God. And those that are around us know what we're doing and they know that we're waiting on God and we become unflappable in our hope. Our faith should not be shaken just because of a report. Our faith should not be shaken just because of a situation or something crashes that we think should not. We need to wait on God to work in our lives and we need to learn to give people the benefit of the doubt. We need to stop having unrealistic expectations of our relationships and the people that we're around. We must make sure that we're rooted and grounded in the word of God. We must make sure that all that we're doing is beneficial to the saints of God. We shouldn't expect too much from other people when we're not willing to lay it all out, when we're not willing to give it our all, when we're not willing to sacrifice so that someone may win or that we can be a blessing to someone when we're always in a self-serving mode or in a congratulatory mode where we want to accolades when it is truly only God that deserves any accolades. If you've done anything great and magnificent, you owe it unto God. We must continue to pray and God will mold and shape us in his image. And in his time, in his time, I'm not the Christian that I was 10, 20 years ago but I'm much better, but I'm nowhere near the Christian I will be 10 or 20 years from now. What do we do while we're waiting on God? We must spend time in prayer and meditation, talking to God in a manner that God knows who we are. We must learn to pray. We must learn to pray more. We must learn to pray more. We must even pray while we're praying. I know that sounds redundant, but we need to connect and, and, and talk to God. We need that, that, that affirmation that only God can give us. And we must be transparent in how we do this. And we need to enlist others. We need prayer partners. A cord of many strands is not easily broken. And it wouldn't hurt us to come in and sing some psalms and sing some hymns to ourselves. If his eyes on the sparrow, if I could sing, oh, what a great God we have. What a mighty God we serve. Oftentimes when I'm downtrodden and heavy laden, singing those songs brings back to remembrance the things that God has done for me, the things that he has brought me through, the way that he is directing me. And I need to let go and truly let God have his way with me. That doesn't mean that I don't work. That doesn't mean that I'm not involved. What that means is that I stop always thinking about what I want and humbly prostrate myself and ask God, what do you want for me? And then when he speaks, I need to listen, not trying to dictate to him what to say or how to say it. He may be slowing me down. He may be redirecting me. He may put up a barrier to keep me from going off the road. I need to be judicious with my time, knowing that oftentimes it is in the dark that God does a lot of miraculous work. He might be having you stumbling and, and, and falling down right now to get your attention. He wants to talk to you. Don't think that God has abandoned you. There's always hope. We get so caught up in this microwave mentality that God has got to come right now, that God has got to do what I want to do when you don't even do what people ask you to do. And most of us don't even have our children do everything the way we ask them to do, the when we want them to do it, how we want them to do it, but yet and still we love them. And many of us will give our lives up for them. We need to talk to God and we need to talk to God and be willing to listen. And you know what, saints? Go out and help somebody who may be less fortunate. Go out and tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Go out and tell somebody your testimony and share it with them, you know, and let them know that God is real. And you know what? Something you can do that will brighten your day at any time when you're feeling downtrodden and heavy laden. Smile. Do your best. Smile. Smile 
restore something in you that may be missing. Think about something. Be content with your life. Be patient. You know, when we smile and we do work of ministry and we reach out and help other people, we have a tendency to make the devil angry. Not to mention, when we smile, a lot of other people smile. And you know something? Smiling, we may release some of these wrinkles that we're starting to get in our faces as we mature and we might start to look 20, 30 years younger if we start smiling instead of scowling and frowning frowning I mean what I'm saying is that we need to be patient and wait on God because God has not forgotten us God will never leave and guess what Saints he will never forsake you know this God loves you I love you and there's nothing you can do about it understand this be strong because your hope is in the Lord never give up never give out because God at any time can show up in any of our lives and show up and show out.